Um, now, uh, one of the, uh, one of, in Outsiders, we like to look at the, not only the living outsiders, but also some of the dead outsiders in Australian history. Um, I was uh, sitting around the other day reading my Warren Mundine uh, book, my Warren Mundine in black and white, which every family, every decent family should do, sit around, read about Warren Mundine, talk about Warren Mundine, chat about Warren Mundine which is how we spend much of our weekend, when, to my astonishment, I said to my son something about Lionel Rose. And my son, who is a product of our proud product of our Australian education system, had no idea who Lionel Rose was, had never heard of him. Now, this is a major failing of my parenting skills, but also of our education system. So here to tell us all about the great Lionel Rose, who I remember as a child, there was Cassius Clay and there was Lionel Rose, and one was American and the other was Australian. And that, to me, was something to be proud of as a kid, uh, as, as it was for Warren Mundine. Warren, welcome back to Outsiders. It's great that... Great to be here, and, uh, and and also I like to not only the decent families out there read the book. I like to see all Australians read that book. <laughs> the indecent uh, ones yeah, as well. Indecent <laughs> ones as well. It, it to uh, you know because it is about Australia and it's about being proud to be Australian. That's what I hope you got out of the book. Absolutely. Well, I want to talk absolutely, and I want to talk specifically about Lionel Rose because many people don't know about Lionel Rose. Now, Lionel Rose was our famous. Boxer. He was our Cassius Clay. He had the bantamweight title yeah. a couple of times. Yeah. Uh, he came from a poor Aboriginal background. Yeah. Uh, and yet, uh, after, uh, by the end of the 60s, so it was all during the 1960s, yeah. by the end of the 60s, he was bigger than Elvis. He was bigger than the Beatles to Australian kids, particularly to uh, Indigenous kids, but to all Australian right. kids. And one of the great things that was actually said in his obituary, that he brought black and white Australia together. Now let's just have a little bit of a look at uh, some footage. I just want to show you this footage of when uh, Lionel was uh, uh, welcomed back home to Melbourne. Uh, he came, he actually thought when he got off the aeroplane, and the footage will run while we're talking, uh, when he got off the aeroplane he thought the Beatles must be in Melbourne because there was this massive crowd. Warren, um, this was late 60s and the crowd was there for an Aboriginal kid, Lionel Rose. Tell us about it. Oh, well, Lionel Rose is one of those people who transcend everything. He, he was uh, coming at a very important time in the history of Australia about bringing us all together as Australians. Because up until then, if you, he was born in Jackson Tracks, uh, which yep. was uh, uh, in an old stock route area, which where Aboriginals usually gathered around Australia uh, to, to, to go work on farms and that. So he was brought up with a very good work ethic. He was yep. picked up by uh, the, uh, the police sergeant there who put him in the gym and then built his career forward in that. So it's a story and, of... An, an interesting thing, Warren, is uh, when he first... I think he was only 14, he went for his first fight. His dad died yeah. that same day when he was heading off one of his very first fights. And uh, the, his, 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 his coach or whoever it was said, you know, are you all right? He said, Dad would want me to fight this fight because how else am I going to feed the kids? He immediately saw it as his responsibility. Dad was dead, his responsibility to go out, get money, feed that family. And it was a very much a, a, an old Australian thing. that we, you know, The job of men in those days, and yep. it was men, uh, was to go out, get a job, feed their families, look after the kids, make sure they got an education, make sure they got opportunities, get themselves a house uh, so that they're, they're housed yes. and sheltered and fed and looked after. And that was their job. And it was, and it was a, it's a very strong culture for that whole area. And for him to do that, you know, going from, this, from where he come from, to have that good Aussie culture in him as well as his Aboriginal culture, but that, become, that was like my family. They wanted that same thing, a job, a house, feeding their families. And this is what endeared him to the, Austra to the Australian population, to everyone. He was, he was this, this man who believed in work, believed in, 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 in if you want to go to succeed in life, you've really got to train hard, work hard and exactly. do Exactly. Now, I'm just going to play you this clip because this is very telling. This is from uh, This Is Your Life, so in the early 70s, Age only 27. Yeah. He had already achieved so much they made a special This Is Your Life uh, e episode for him with Mike Willisey. But what was intriguing to me was that uh, there was another boxer there on the program as well. There were several boxers. Uh, another Indigenous bo boxer who made the point that for Indigenous Australians back in the some kind of 40s and 50s into the 60s, the way to find what they looked for as equality was in the boxing ring. Have a listen to this. 
I think he even went so far once to say that boxing was the game because it was the only place where an Aboriginal might That's be treated equal. Aboriginal might be uh, well, treated as an equal uh, because uh, with our people, we've uh, got to start from uh, beyond the airport. So, Warren and Ross, he went into the boxing ring not only to earn a crust for his family, to feed the family, but to find that equality, yeah. and he found it. Oh, that's right, and it, it more than found it. He yeah. just, you know, look at that crowd that come to Melbourne. Anyone would love to have a that's crowd right. like that to welcome them home. I, I just flew back from London. I didn't get that crowd. Oh, you missed them. They were there earlier, oh, earlier yeah. Warren. We, we had more lined up. The plane was late, mate. We couldn't wait all day. But, you know, it just... And that was... This showed what Australia was really like. Like, we were heading into the, in the late 60s, going into the end of the 70s, and we wanted to build a, a better nation. A uh, nation was built on, you know, for, you know Aboriginal people. Uh, we had British institutions. We had immigrants who'd come here after the Second World War, millions of them, and worked in factories and did things and built a great mm. nation. Mm. And that's how Aboriginals saw themselves in those days. They said, we're going to be part of this whole new nation. We're going we're gonna to work hard. We're going to feed our kids. We're going to get ahead. Uh, we're going to break through all the barriers. You know, nothing's going to stop us from doing this. And, that's, and he sort of brought that whole Australianism forward. Mm. And this is why people love him. Even today, uh, everyone uh, talks about how they love him. I want to ask you specifically, in 1968, so in February 1968, that's when he beat uh, Fighting Harada. That was the big win for him. Everyone said he would never win it. It was against all the odds. He went to Tokyo and he beat Fighting Harada. That was only a few months after the 1967 referendum. Yeah. So we hear a lot about the 1967 referendum uh, and still controversial today and still discussed today. So but there was this great feeling of optimism. Yeah. Uh, and then suddenly you've had the referendum, then out comes Lionel Rose, defeats Fighting Harada, becomes the world champ. I mean, this was incredible stuff. How undisputed. Old, how old, undisputed. How old were you and what did it mean to you as an Indigenous Well, community? I was about... 12, 13 at the time, and to me, after the referendum, when not over 90% of Australians sent this clear message out that we want to build a, a better Australia, and then he he wins his world title against Fighting a Rider. Fighting a Rider was an all all time now great boxer. We've got boxer. some photos on the screen of you as a young lad around this time, Warren. <laughs> we especially uh, when we did a bit of a Mike Willisy and went behind your back to get a few of these photos of young Warren at that Whatever sort of happened age. To that good looking kid. <laughs> that good looking uh, kid. And uh, <laughs> so this what what uh, Lionel Rose meant to you, to this young boy. Yeah. Well. He meant everything to me because it showed me that it, by hard work, this 19-year-old kid, he's only 19 now when he yeah. won this title. He went to Tokyo. He then went on and defended his world title in Los Angeles and that against, the, you know, Chuchu Costello and that. Yep. And amazing bloke who, who did... And it was a very simple philosophy. You got up every day, you trained, you worked hard, you got prepared yourself for the fight. Uh, you you uh, you didn't complain about things. You just when you had an obstacle in front of you, you 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 got through it and you worked your way to the... So that's a clear message to me that I, the world's my oyster. I can do anything. Exactly. I, and, and I can do things if I want to work at it. If I want to work at it, then I can achieve it. And that was a clear message I got from this 19-year-old kid. There was a beautiful uh, interview after his uh, Rocky Gattolari fight. All right, yes. uh, Which took place at the Tin Shed yeah. at Rush Cutters Bay. <laughs> I mean, that was a time when uh, the eastern suburbs still had some real culture. <laughs> um, but uh, it was a tough and hard fight. In the last round, he knocked Gattolari down and then uh, Gattolari got up and they kept going and he smacked him so hard yeah. uh, that he knocked him flat out and Gattolari was carried off uh, the canvas. And in the, uh, in the next morning... You know, uh, our, our boy Lionel was interviewed and he said, look, I'm just so sorry, you know. <laughs> I did not want to beat him that he way. Did. He is such a nice yeah. guy. Oh, I know, yeah. gentleman. Yeah, I'm really <laughs> sorry for beating you up. Yeah. But, but, it, but, it, but he it, was it, like that. He it, was a gentleman of life. I actually met him later in my life. Great. Uh, it was just before he, he passed away. And it was. And I'll tell you what, I just turned into a little 13-year-old boy again. Mm. And I walked up and said, <laughs> you know, you changed my life. And he looked at me, he's like, you, mm. you're a madman. Mm. And, he, and, I, and I explained to him, and why and he, and he just took my hand and said thank you for that mm. thank you for telling now me. ross there was a key point another interview which uh which goes to the heart of the matter mm. which we're going to play now which was why is lionel rose not now a massive hero of the left i would have thought he would have been taught in our schools i would have thought there is a statue in his hometown but i would have thought every aussie school kid should not only know about this guy, but be emulating this guy. But instead, the left have buried him. 
I'm sorry to say yeah. it, they've buried him. Now, you have to ask yourself why that is. I think the clue is in this very interview. Have a close listen to what Lionel Rose said when questioned on race. Lionel, do you see this fight as something of a victory for your people? Well, I haven't thought about it like that, but uh, if, uh, when you ask me a question, I think uh, perhaps you could get, uh, they could get more recognition now. I believe I'm the first Aboriginal to win a, a world title, but uh, I'm not, uh, not too cleared up with all, the, uh, uh, all this sort of thing. I'd, I'd, I'd think of myself as, a, as an Australian. I think everyone else is an Australian here with me. So let's just think about that. Yes, he was proud, Warren, of his Indigenous victory, but he absolutely ruled it out as a political thing and said, I'm an Australian, we are all Australians. This is anathema to the left. They want division, they want black against white. We were just talking about that earlier, Ross. Is this why Lionel Rose is not the hero he should be because he wanted us to all just be Australians, regardless of colour of our skin. And he was a very simple, straightforward person, and like a lot of people are. He, he believed in Australia. Look, I'm, everyone's proud. I'm proud of my Irish her heritage. I'm proud of my Aboriginal heritage. And, and, uh, but, I'm also, but more importantly, I'm, I'm a proud Australian. Exactly. And this is about Australia. You know, everyone's you know, out there, UN and all these other people knock us. I always say, say to us, we did a pretty good job here. We took millions of immigrants here. Uh, we got, uh, you know, as we said, British institutions. We got uh, Indigenous people and that. But, uh, and we did a pretty good job. You know, we're not good or bad, but we did a pretty good job. You know? And when people knock us, I say, pick a better nation than us. <laughs> pick a better nation than us that, that, that did this melting pot. Uh, no, and no one else has been able to answer that. Well, look, it's a fair. I think it's a fair question. There are two alternative approaches to the question of how do we advance civilization. I mean, John Stuart Mill's dedication to On Liberty says that the great purpose of this book is to expand the realm of fulfilled human potential. That human potential is the most precious resource. And the question is, how do we create an environment where the where the maximum amount of it can be fulfilled. And the left is saying we must, uh, the left is saying the way to do it is to focus on gender, to focus on race, to rub the sort of constant uh, Aboriginality, to build a grievance-based industry from which you might extract some benefit. You know, we, on, we outsiders say uh, that the human genome's got 20,000 different uh, nominative genes in it. There's a small number of them dedicated to skin colour and that you are something much, much greater than those two or three genes which determine the pigment in your skin. One of the things I found strange is like people like Martin Luther King and everyone like that fought for equality, people mm. to be treated equal, to have equal opportunities. Mm. And, and uh, you know, you, what you get out of that is really up to you, but it's about equal opportunities and doing things. And I was had a, a, discuss, a, a discussion, an argument with a person on, on, on Twitter, and he was saying to me, oh, you, you've forgotten that you're Aboriginal, you've forgotten uh, your colour and all this type of stuff. And I put up uh, uh, a Martin Luther King's statement, I want to be my children to be, uh, be judged by, the char by their character. character rather than the colour of their skin. Yeah. And they come back to me saying, well, he's forgot who he was as well. Mm. And I say, so what? We're supposed to accept that when you're uh, uh, of dark skin or with, uh, Aboriginal and that, that you've got no future, that's it? Mm. You're just trapped in this that's thing? That's what they want because then and you, you feel... And, and that's get, what they've done. You never did get anything better. That's just rubbish. And that's what it's the rubbish. left's it's about, done. It's, it's, and this is where all this stupid diversity and all this other stuff starts coming in with that. You are trapped by this. No, you're not. And this is what Lionel Rose taught me. Don't know your place. My place is not to be trapped there. My place is to build a future for myself, my family, and, and, into the, and, and lay the foundations for that for my children and grandchildren that Precisely. to work from. And this is what it's all, all about. And Australia is a great country for doing it. It's one of the greatest countries in the world to be able to do this stuff. But that's, you know, and I, I look, every country has bad and good history. But the thing for us today is to, to, to build a future for each other. To build and I, I, absolutely. And I, I recommend this book, Warren Mundine's book, to everybody. Uh, particularly, I loved reading about things like Lionel Rose. I think we should never forget Lionel Rose. Yeah, never should forget uh, And he should be a hero to us all, to all Australians. And guess what, Warren? He also had a crack at singing. Yeah. Here you go. We're <laughs> going to thank you for coming thank along you. today, Warren. And let's go out. Uh, we're going to go to a commercial break, but Lionel Rose also had a top five single. Here you go. Thank you for your smile and the love that's in your eyes. Thank you for the heart 
that's big and true. Thank you for.